So, we're finally back at Slideway Records for episode two of Chat and Pony of Paddy the Baddy. Sorry about the delay, people. I've had lots of messages asking when's the next one, why, you know what I mean? I was meant to record this second episode a couple of weeks, well, a good couple of weeks back now, but I was very sick, like, ten, I got sick about 10 days before Christmas and I was terrible. You couldn't even hear me talk, my voice was ridiculous, so if I would have come in and done this, no one would have been able to understand me. I was like, sometimes I was talking and it was coming out as a whisper. My bird kept saying to me, so what are you whispering for? What are you whispering for? But I weren't. I was just, it, it was coming out like that. And then I put a post up saying I was going to have Paul Rimmer in, my coach, as uh, my, second, my, my first guest on the second episode. But in all this good few weeks, Paul... Paul's wife's ended up having having the child, the third child, little baby Leo. Can't wait to see him on the mats, fucking men up. But um, congrats to Paul and Louisa. So I'll have I'll have Paul on in the next few weeks. Just um, at the minute, obviously the baby's too young. He's been spending time with, with his family. So I thought after the first episode, I went a little bit into my mental health and other people I know who've had mental health issues and stuff like that. So I thought I'd bring my good friend Paul Webb on. Yeah. He is one of the good guys. He's a, a mental health nurse, you know what I mean? He he sees everything first hand and he understands it all. He knows he, he knows what how it affects people, not just mentally but physically also. So if you just wanted to introduce yourself, Webb. Yeah, yeah alright. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Been looking like, forward to it. Mad. Thinking about it, I was going to say how long have I known you, but it, I first started training on the 20th of January 2010. So I, I think on, I started 2009. Yeah, that was you, like, was there, you was there when I first yeah, went. Yeah, yeah. So on Monday, Monday's the 20th, I'll have been training in 10 years. I'm mad that, isn't it? Like, so I'll, I've known you for yeah. 10 years. And you got your black belt before me. <laughs> <laughs> just consistency, yeah. that one, just consistency. Um, yeah. We've known each other a long time. And yeah. You are someone you know that I can confide in. I speak to you about yeah, stuff, speak especially, to me, especially especially in the camps. And yeah, all that was because of this, the the side that you understand a lot more than anyone. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's about having that trust with people as well. Isn't it, it is. So that's, that's that's. I think that's one of the most important things. And when it comes to mental health, because people do see it, there still is that massive stigma. Yeah, around is. it, where you know. If you broke your arm today, you you know you'd happily tell everyone. But if you started hearing voices, then it's not something that you want to start bragging about. No, you know, then you know people I mean? like, oh, yeah, he's, he's a weirdo. Yeah, you know that's what I mean? mean. So it's about kind of, I think like where we need to go in terms of like in in everything, especially you know males, men, women, every, everything is education and mental health. Just kind of, it doesn't have to be stigmatized. It, it, there is help out there for for everyone from you know kind of the really extreme conditions to, you know, just something as simple as, as depression that everyone can gain help and everyone can have access to help. Yeah. And like um, as you say, a lot of a lot of people like the stigma us fighters, like people think the ah oh, the the dead strong to this or that, but up he is a lot different, you know what I mean? Yes. We have we have a lot of woodies. As you know, Paul, you fought yourself. Yeah. In fight camp, low calories, constantly questioning yourself. You you can't it's a depression. You yeah, can't. It's, it's it's it was hard. It was sometimes some days it's horrible because I was just saying before you know for those like like I, I done a ten week training camp. You know you helped me all the way through. You one of my main sparring partners in there, but and you fucking I confided in you quite a bit as well. Even towards the, you know just looking at other people eat makes you feel down and yeah. kind of those ten weeks you can't you you you. you your own worst critic and it's, it's it does get to you in the end that like it, it does it, it, right up towards fight day it does and it's a massive relief when it's all over as you know getting the win is. is just lucky like you say there watching other people eat and stuff even like one for me is going to see me mates going to see me mates Total. in the booze or something I'm, I'm sitting there with a bottle of water and a macro chef's gone or a macro chef goodie yeah. and they're sitting there drinking pints and Ordering chippies and getting Chris from the bar, and I'm sitting there like, oh, this is horrible. This is horrible. Like, it, it makes it makes you sit alone a lot more. It makes you just sit in your yeah, room. Yeah, makes like, you isolate yourself. Yeah, you isolate yourself like from that. people because 
you don't want to be around that. You're thinking, oh, no, it's a temptation, it's a temptation. I end up sitting in my room a lot on my Xbox, but then you, you're going through more stuff in your own head anyway. Yeah, and you end up just wrecking your own yeah, head. Yeah, wrecking like, your own head, thinking about stuff. I remember it was me and my mum's birthday. It was like right at the start of, of the camp and kind of... I've always been a big guy and like I've always kind of said to myself, right, I'm going to diet this week, I'm going to do it this week. And by the Wednesday, I'm kind of yeah. sitting there in Mackey's. Having a this week of, never came. Yeah, this week never came type thing. So it was kind of the first diet that I've ever really stuck to. And it was like the first few weeks, it was my mum's birthday and everyone was there 50th and yeah. everyone was round at ears. And my mate Lee was saying like how grey I looked, like kind of because I was just like, I was on like, I went from probably eating like 4,000 calories a day to 1,800 calories a day. Like I really, I must have been like a massive, I'm not technical with nutrition type thing, but it must have been a massive like um, shock to me system because I, I just did not feel good the first few weeks. And obviously towards the end, I felt probably the fittest I ever I ever felt, but it does really affect you. I know like, exactly yeah. what you mean there because with my last camp, I was meant to fight on the, was it the 22nd of November? It was, I think it was, or... It was in November anyway. My mum's birthday is the twenty second of October. Yeah. And like we done a little surprise party for her and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And it's just hard being around all everyone's having a drink. Yeah, There's a buffy. You know what I mean? It's that's the side of like our sport that people don't see. Everything it affects you. You know what I mean? And you like, kind of you get those kind of questions in your head, like the oh, you know I know it sounds really kind of sinister, but. My mum might not even be here next week. Next year, I should be enjoying yeah. it with every. Do you know what I mean? Or, and I can't even enjoy yeah, this. I can't even enjoy it. being young or being this. But that's it's it. The it's dedication not, to the, the one thing I was thinking is, I can't even be a normal lad. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what goes through yeah. my head. But yeah. then you've, that's the thing that we have to use to push ourselves forward. We're not normal. No, we're that like far one, from normal. One percent of people that will put their body through hell to do something. You know yeah, I mean? and, you, like, and you, you're literally on fight night, and in my opinion. You're putting your life on the line. Yeah, you know the, you the way from Anything can happen. You know from cutting from cutting water, which is you know it's again it's really dangerous to to then you know getting in 24 hours later and you've seen some people you know in, in like the UFC like when they've cut really a lot of water they look really weak in the way in and then they're coming in literally putting the life on it. It's, yeah. a, it's a dangerous it's a dangerous sport, but you've got to be dedicated to it. And but to say it doesn't affect you like like you in your last fight like you would done everything really well I can imagine turning up there knowing that your opponent hasn't really give a shit about the weight cut it just makes me it makes you think like how I, I would have been destroyed and, I, yeah, and I, I got to fight I got to fight I can imagine like that that was probably the best preparation I've ever had leading into a fight as you know you yeah, know, yeah. In the gym and stuff I've said it before say it again I was unprofessional a few years ago I just wing stuff this fight camp I've done everything right I literally had to do six pound in a bath, you know what I mean? And I've done 17 pound overnight. <laughs> and I was eating carbs the week of the fight this time and stuff. Well, the men to have fought. And um, like when you turn up and your opponent's now pound heavy and you're just like, what? I've put everything into this. Yeah. And like, I'll never forget I was sitting, like I got me out there to go and get me a bowl and a spoon because I had crunchy nuts. So eating <laughs> some crunchy nuts. And then I spoke to Paul on the phone <coughs> and I just started crying. I yeah. was saying to him, Paul, I want to fight. I've done it. I've put everything into this to fight. I, like a couple of years ago, I would have just fought. Yeah. But Paul and my manager, Graham, both just said, no, you're not doing it. There's too much at stake for your career. You know, yeah, you've got, you've got to make, you know, you've got to make that you're, you're at an age now where, you know, you kind of, you're ready to like explode. Aren't yeah. you? Like, so you've got to make that right decision. And and like Some lads said, coming in so much heavier. Your health, you yeah, know what I mean? Like, me, I spoke to my dad, my brother, my mum, my girlfriend, every one of them, even Adam, who was at the weigh-in with me. You know, mm. Everyone's seen the video, Adam <laughs> telling the midget to shut up. <laughs> uh, all of them said, you can't do that fight, it's just stupid. Yeah, it's just like, not, it's not. Nathan Frederick, who won the won the belt that night on the, on the show, I'll never forget it, he was what he, as the like the way and finished, he walked past and just said, lad, don't even give him the opportunity, uh, how can you come in that much heavy? He just wanted his picture on the poster. Yeah, that's, that's all he wanted. I, I was, hoping that, yeah, I was yeah. hoping that you'd... I think he just thought, oh, he's, like as you were saying, Scouser, 
it's not a scouser lad <laughs> but he was saying you're, you're a scouser aren't you and all that blah blah no one will fight you but someone else did offer to take the fight but he had a better record so it's hard to take him yeah. if you're 30 pounds heavier yeah, you know what I mean Oops. he was going on that he was he was dehydrated and he was fainting and stuff we know about that like you've seen me in some weigh-ins looking like a, a punter you know what I mean <laughs> looking terrible in, in, in ridiculous shape you yeah. know what I mean and he didn't look like that he had energy bouncing around he was arguing with, like, I, I'm sorry but if if you've cut that much if you're saying that you've cut that much weight there's no way you've got enough energy, energy to be to like argue. to bounce yeah. up and start you've, see, you've seen it not just yourself you've seen it throughout the whole all weight cuts like even know. like I mentioned another scout with Till when he fought Wonderboy yeah, you know what I mean he was like that yeah. I, I, mean? I was there in the crowd with me and um, Ashley went to the weigh-ins and he was he was dragging his feet on the stage. He had no energy at all. He he, he killed you know, he literally would have killed himself if he kept on going. Yeah, and that's so that's something that like to do with weight cuts and like like I said, turn up to a fight ready and the other person just not giving a fuck. And then again the other side of the fighting where you do turn up, you fight and you lose. Yeah, people people don't understand what you feel like after that. Know what I mean? Yeah, and I can't. Yeah, I, I can imagine like, that to be. And uh, plenty of times after after a fought back and after a fought nad, where I was sitting with people, and like stuff would come in my head, and I had to just like go to the toilet or walk away or like oh yeah I'm off me and I'd just cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know what I mean? I'd I'd literally just be like oh my god, and I'd just start crying, and then like ten minutes later I'd be like oh, what's what's up with you? And then there's all sorts of mad shit going around, you know. Mm. You just, uh, well, it's like look at it, like the way, the, like the way I look at that type of stuff because, and I think it shows you as a professional and you as how you matured into a into a man. To you know, look what you just said, kind of leading up to you know. The, I know you didn't fight the, the last time, but everyone that you you spoke to everyone and kind of they all helped you make that decision where you it wasn't just you making that decision where okay yeah you took that loss when that. when i fought back i got told not to fight by about seven different people yeah all close to me no your hand's not better your hand's still bad your hand's still bad no i'm still gonna win i'm still gonna win it's all right yeah. i'm still gonna win didn't listen to anyone and i paid for it know yeah. what I mean? and after that you you've isolated yourself and kind of put yourself you know yeah. because you haven't been talking and and he, that's even where... before that obviously after that fight i was thinking oh why didn't I listen to everyone and that got in my head more and it made me isolate myself even more yeah, thinking i've embarrassed yeah. them because they they told me not to do it and they're all right and i'm wrong and i'm a, I'm a fucking idiot you know what yeah, I mean? but, yeah it's, but then at the same time i can understand i think being a fighter i think you've got to have a certain type of personality where you've got to have that kind of the fucker I'll beat them yeah. you, you can't have that you know you can't doubt yourself for yeah you second. can't doubt yourself and I think you know in I remember being the day of, the day of my fight I literally I completed Red Dead Redemption and <laughs> <laughs> yeah and when because I had like nothing to do I was just sitting there like what do I do before we go over yeah. to Liverpool and uh, I completed that and when you know I won't ruin it but when like the final part happened I just sat there and like bawled my eyes out. That's how like high your emotions are. Yeah. So you 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 got you're not going to be making the right decisions. And I think kind of now kind of looking looking at you as a fighter personally, uh, you know, as a friend and as a training partner, you've you've got a, a a lot of people around you to to kind of help you make them decisions when you're in them high emotional emotional states. If that's the best way of saying it, because I, I I do completely I was like I was broke leading up that day yeah. waking up it was it does fight yeah. fight camps break yeah like everyone in the gym knows what I'm like I, I I can't help it I I have a good moan don't I yeah. I know what this that's going what are you doing there what are you doing there I have a good moan and wake up week as well wake, that's, well, that's well wake up week I rip people's heads <laughs> off I can't help it someone asked me a stupid question on Instagram so I'm like lad are you messing are you taking the piss fight week and you're asking me that I can't, like I just bite people's head off that's why I have to I have to take my hat off to my bed she puts up with some shit six weeks leading up to a fight because she when my dad's not in she cooks me teas he does all sorts for you know what I mean and then some days I'll just turn around and go what the fuck are you talking to you shut your mouth you know what I mean <laughs> and it's just because I'm I'm drained and yeah yeah you're drained it's just, everything angry. just gets to you and like I was saying it's all in your head yeah yeah it, it, it is and I think you've kind of got to build build around that because kind of like 
would have said, I can't say I was depressed in the fight camp, but I think would I have some symptoms of it? Yeah, I probably I probably would have. Same. Where, I, know where, what, I know what you mean. What. Yeah, no, I was. I was getting dressed fine. I was. I was. I was doing everything. Everything right. I, I was. You know, functioning in society per se. But at the same time, your worst critic. It's you, you're dead snappy. You, you you know you're not eating as well snappy as you want dog. to. Yeah. But like I I remember that that, that week. I'll never forget that week. Cut week. You put me all over the um, Instagram when I wore that tracky. Yeah. Lad. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lit. <laughs> no, you, you just need to go on my Instagram, yeah, and look at me. It, lad, that's the only safe story I've got, you know. Like, I, I need to sort my Instagram with that. I've been loads of places and I've I've done loads of stories, but I've never saved them. I'm gonna have to get someone who knows what to do with Instagram. You know yeah. me, lad. I'm not not technoed up, but there's one safe story, and it's in the gym. And, I, and I, <laughs> I've hid all Webb's clothes and he's running around in his bills. <laughs> Didn't the wedge you as well? Yeah, you wedge you. Yeah, I think ripped me, your bills. Yeah, that, was, that was my fight week. That was my, <laughs> and the worst thing about my like my whole and you all knew. I think you all knew. Found out like a few weeks before, and but like I I cut like fifty pound. And it really kind of really cut me diet out, and yeah. it turned out I didn't have to cut any weight at all. Yeah, I had a coach, Paul. Yeah, as you know, the heavyweight limit's two sixty five. Yeah, yeah. And what what was your weight before he got you the fight? It was like three ten. Yeah, and but with this it was amateur, so it was just open weight. You could bring in whatever. <laughs> and Paul said to Paul Rimmer said to Paul, "No, you've got to be you've got to be two sixty five. So over like eight weeks, Paul lost fifty pounds. Know what I mean? That's off to him. He done done unbelievably well, but. We never give the game away like this. No, we, not at all. We, Cal- let, we let you get that weight down. Cal- Callum let the get like gave the game away a little tiny bit on the last week because he was like he was like me go to guy with um, like me worries. He was always you know kind yeah. of, he'd done it before and um, I kind of said yeah he's he's good to speak to. Callum, yeah though, yeah because he, he kind of knew because I kind of spoke to me other mates like Sam he's really into his fitness but Callum he's fought before yeah, so he kind of knew yeah he kind of knew what kind of was going on. And um, the last week I was like, do you reckon I could, I'm like two, six, seven now, do you reckon I could fit in this cheat meal on the Sunday? Because I really, every Sunday was my cheat meal and if I yeah. didn't have it, or it was it was a shit, like one week I got like one of those salt and pepper boxes and it was horrible and it ruined me. Ended week. up late, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's the like, thing, especially with a cheat meal. Like, yeah, because I whole week's it. leading up to that. Your whole week's like, oh, I'm going to get this cheat meal, I'm going to get this so cheat yeah, meal. And you feel like you've got that energy till like Wednesday and then Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you kind of like got no energy, and then me Sunday, I kind of got all me yeah, me pizza back and all that. So that was funny. I can ne- I'll never forget that. He was like, "Yeah, what you have for your cheat meal?" <laughs> yeah, I get like a fourteen inch pizza and a twelve inch garlic <laughs> bread with cheese, and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> That's more calories than like you can have in three days, like yeah, your lesson, aren't you? I don't know how true it is, but um, fishy told me like. Well, well, it it's it was, works for him and it did work for me, but I don't know like the science behind. But he always said like on like on your cheat day, you've got four hours where you can eat whatever you want. <laughs> and he said you can have like four pizzas if you want. And he said it won't affect you. So I kind of was like, I won't say anything to anyone else, but I'll see if that works. And I was still. <laughs> that's just that's t- yeah. typical fishy dad. Isn't it? I'm gonna have him on here in the next in the next few episodes, but that's typical fishy, absolute spaceman. He's hilarious. Oh. Uh, yeah, like me, me, me cheat meals each week. I was like, I think you were the, you and Calum were like the only people I sent pictures to because he didn't tell me not to do it. But yeah. we kind of just put like laughing faces of like saying. You, you know, need to chill out yeah, to it there because I was like having like like a full pizza, garlic bread, and then I think some weeks I got like a double chicken burger as well. <laughs> <laughs> so and it, it all went like and like afterwards I felt like I'd been poisoned, but it was yeah. like it was so worth it. That that is the thing. Like I noticed after like, I have come off a diet, even when you go you go to the toilet, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you can feel it in your insides. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's everything's like, not right. It's, it's like not. you. It's like you. Filling up a your, diesel yeah, car with your, petrol, it's your body's not. like rejecting it. It's like, no, you need to go back to the way you was. But I, I, I'm terrible, me. I just yeah. didn't with me with me being sick and stuff over Christmas. Like I was training after the after I was meant to fight, training right up to it, and uh, I got sick on about the fifteenth, and I was in bed for a full day, wrote off, and then like an idiot, I come in and done king of the mat. Uh, didn't no, I? You, you were absolutely fucked. ill. Rolled for over an hour and was just like, ah, 
Next day, I was in bed the whole day, lad. <laughs> in bed for the whole day. Absolutely wrote off. And my voice, never obviously with that being sick there, everyone was like, no, don't train, don't train. So I never ended up saying until like the day before New Year's Eve. Yeah, so... And you- it was just jolly, jolly. Well, that's, that's the idea that you get in your head, isn't I it? Know. It's like whenever I don't train, if I know I'm training on the night, I'll have like, I'll set my meals up because I hate eating before training. Yeah. So you kind of eat a bit healthier, but like this week, meant to be started because I've got that grapple fest coming yeah. up in the 29th. So it's open weight, but I want to trim a few pounds and kind of meant to be starting healthy eating this week. And I've had a bit of a cold, so it's just, it's I didn't just, train yeah, last night. It goes out the window. Yeah, it just goes out the window. I've just been eating. And Just obviously, yeah, everyone knows what Christmas is like. And in the gym, I I teach uh, a lot of young kids and stuff like that. And I got a good few boxes of chocolates and that. I want to thank all the mums and dads for that. Everyone brings you to chocolates in. So I had them all at my disposal. Know what I mean? Yeah. I had uh, little Fates mum Jay got me some white Twixers. Uh, Max's Max got me some some beers and stuff. Um, other kids, mums and dads, uh, little Joe's dad brought me a big bottle of vodka in, you know what I mean? I had all sorts, Sophie's mum brought us all the other celebrations in. I had all sorts of little bits and it's just there. So you're like, yeah. ah, yeah, I'm not fighting, well, ah, well, yeah, I'm not fighting, ah. And you just keep going and going. And like we're saying, I know we keep going over it, that makes you even more in a worse place. It wrecks your health, yeah, it really does then, wreck your health. Like I, I come in, I weigh myself. I started my diet, not Monday gone, the Monday before. And... On the Sunday night, I went in. You know what I mean? Mm. I had like big because it was the, it was the day Liverpool played Everton. Curtis Jones, yes, lad, one nil. We slapped them <laughs> up with the reserves. We, um, I didn't even like. I was in bed all day that day, and I didn't even end up eating till about three o'clock. I had a big like when I have a bowl of cereal, I have yeah, a bowl of cereal, lad. I ended up weighing a bowl of cereal I had a few months ago to see what it was, and it says on the on the box I have like forty gram or something. My bowls of cereal like hundred and twenty. <laughs> like I weighed it, it was like oh my god. I had a big massive bowl of that. Then bread come down, <laughs> two brochet buns with cheese melted on, four sausage, four bacon, two ash browns, and then I made a big bowl of cheesy chips with it, and then just lying in bed I get like three whisper golds and another chocolate bar. <laughs> It sounds it, amazing, though. The next morning was 86 key. 86 key. 86. Shit. But that's, but that's horrible. Like, it I, is. Yeah. And you start doubting yourself. You're like, oh, my God, I've got, to, I've got to lose this much weight in this month. Mm-hmm. I've got to lose over two stone. And you start, like, questioning yourself in your own head. Well, I, I remember, you know, going back to kind of, like, the, the mental health kind of talk. I, I remember kind of go like, in my camp, on my cheat days, as much as I'd made the most of it, there was them, t- <laughs> there was them times where... I was sitting there thinking, should I go and just throw this up? Like, yeah. you know, should I just oh, go and make lad. myself feel sick? I tried to do that. Did you? Like, it's... six weeks before my last fight, I went out with my girlfriend and we went somewhere. And on the way home, she went, come on, let's go to Mackey's. And you got, like, nuggets, one of them cheese selection box things. Yeah, yeah. And we got home. And she had, like, one nugget and one... And you know me, lad, I don't let food yeah, go to waste. I nailed every single bit of it. The <laughs> chips, I had, like, 19 nuggets. I had all the cheese bites. And then I was like, straight away, you regret it. You're like, yeah, yeah, you saw feeling like, oh, why did I do yeah, that? Yeah, what am I doing? Why did I do that? Why did I do that? I ended up going to the toilet and I was like, that. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's what I mean. You know what I mean? We're just not meant to do that. It just didn't come out. Yeah. Our body wanted it. You <laughs> know what I mean? Because, like, the thing is, like... Every Sunday in the back of my head, I was thinking maybe the thing with fishy is, is full of shit, and maybe it isn't a four-hour thing. But and you kind of sitting there, kind of think oh, I should just go and throw it up because I'm ruining this week. I'm gonna let everyone I'm down. I'm back on what I've just lost. And yeah, it's just, yeah. It's just a waste because it is. It's such a happy feeling when you wake up in the morning. You know, you go to the toilet and all that, and you realize, oh wait, I've just lost like 0.2 of a key. You know, since since Even when it was a little bit. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's such an because you know you're going in that right direction. You made up with so. yourself. You're like, yeah, I'm I'm happy here. I'm this weight's coming down. Yeah. I've, I've got nothing to worry about. And it does like do you say healthy body, healthy mind. You know what I mean? Healthy lifestyle. It all ties in together, and it does. Yeah, I yeah. I feel a lot fresher. I feel a lot happier when I know I'm in control of my weight. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I just can see now I'm eating I'm eating a macro chef wrap you know what I mean that's got 300 calories in but if I go to somewhere else and buy a wrap it's going to have what 900 calories in or something yeah, I went to KFC say or Mackey's it's yeah. going to have at least 600 calories in it's it's, it's ridiculous I'm, and you don't realise like until you start because I use that um, you know my, my fit, fitness pal yeah, yeah. Like, that's really good but 
you don't realise how many calories, Cal- like just in a Jaffa cake. I know. It's I've spoke I've spoke about this myself and as you know, Whisper Gold's possibly my favourite <laughs> chocolate bar until yeah. I found the white Twix the other week. But Whisper Gold's two hundred and fifty calories. Just me just like what? It's ridiculous. Yeah, it really is. And you, how, is, how has it got that many calories when it's that big? Yeah, and you think that could be a full meal? Yeah, in, it's that in... big, lad. <laughs> how, how has that got two hundred and fifty calories in? That's only got three hundred. You know what I mean? How has that got two hundred and fifty in? I bought one of those, um, you know, like the meat along Jaffa cake boxes. <laughs> yeah, and it's like it was the worst mistake I could have done. It was over. Like we we're just getting into Christmas, and I was like, you know what? Every kind of every diet plans out the window now it's Christmas you're going to be going out loads for meals or drinking loads or whatever and uh, so I bought one of them it was only three ninety nine. I think there's like four boxes of Jaffa cakes in and it was gone by the next day. like like being honest I, like, and you'd, it's like 60 calories per Jaffa cake so you'd t- it's something I'm bad for I, yeah. I can't like keep something once I start you can't you can't put it away like the week after my fight I literally asked Ben Kelly I walked down the home and bargain room now by the gym <laughs> and I think I bought eight big bars and like seven packs of stuff mm. and lad I was just going to my beds watching the match eating like f- two big bars and two big packs of stuff at the same time with cubs of tea <laughs> what, what, what it mattered made me know what I mean yeah I was, I was talking before but the, uh, my, after, the day after my fight I went in there I went to Costco Oh um, yeah, best pizzas. Ben, that's what that's the, what Ben's about. Ben goes to Costco and gets a box of cookies, a yeah. box of brownies, a pot lad. He does it right. Give him his due. It's, it's he does it right, lad. But it's like eight quid. Like if you if you got that pizza and like yeah, somewhere it's else, eight Domino's, quid. It's like thirty, oh, forty lad. quid. Eight quid. Domino's for like, is what thirteen and a half inch. Yeah, and it's twenty quid. That pizza is like massive, that. and it's and eight it's quid. Amazing. It's like one of the nicest pizzas ever. It is. Yeah, just a grease letter down, don't it? Very, very greasy. Yeah, yeah, you got you've got to pay that price with a big heavy well, pizza. I down, started. Yeah. Well, I, I had some left up, and I got told to warm it up in a frying pan, which sounds mad. Yeah, it's all right. It's the good. one, the one I've started doing with, like, no, the way everything goes soggy when you put it in the microwave. Yeah, yeah. Put a glass of water in with it. Glass and of that, water. That does that help? Yeah, it, it helps. It I doesn't. Know it stays. It stays crispy a bit. Like, I don't. I watch all mad videos on yeah. YouTube. Little <laughs> life hack shit. Know what I mean? Watch that. And I see it on there. Put a um, put a glass of water in. It does. It helps. It's but mad. It, it, it's it's mad though. Like kind of just you know, ne- like thinking back, you never think like how much you would obsess over food doing you know doing a fight camp. No, you wouldn't. It, it's ridiculous. Like, I tend to like the way my weight fluctuated over the years. I tend to my mates and like. Some of my mates are like that. I used mm. to be like that. I used to be like that, and I could eat whatever I wanted. When I first started gym, I'd come in with a subway and eat it half, leave half on the side, and eat it in between two classes. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. I can't eat like three hours before See, I. See, that's what I mean. I can just eat and jump right on the mat. Fast but like, yeah. I used to be like that. Like I wouldn't put weight on. I remember when I first started the gym, I was like fifty-five key. Well, yeah. Yeah. Mad, like, that, isn't I it? never, I never used to put weight. You're on saying that, that you thinking about you were only like what 15? fifteen? Yeah, yeah, only yeah. a child. That like, picture that you put up the other day. Yeah, <laughs> that's, think ma- that's, that's the first ma- ever picture I got in next gen. Yeah, I got it with a lad I knew who was doing the kids' class as well. Yeah, come here, get in the cage and get a picture. Was just like, I was like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Timid, just like yeah, what's happening? I remember, I remember one of my like in the like the first three weeks. I walked in in my school uniform and obviously. <laughs> Like I look about, I still looked about forty back then. Yeah, J- <laughs> Jason was like, what? Yeah, J- Jason was like, you having a laugh, mate? Too? Why are you in a school uniform? Are you like doing fancy dress? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ridiculous, like. But it's it, it's mad how much of like how much of a, a subject food becomes just by taking a fight on it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. That's and, all you think about. Yeah, that's and that's it's probably. Do you think about food more than sex? Yeah, yeah, I, I can I completely agree. And then you you're on. Instagram looking at all sorts all of food. food. I'm gonna go there when I finish. I'm gonna go there when I, I finish. See my phone from like <laughs> mid November is just screenshots of scrangaffs and local businesses what make cakes and cheesecakes and stuff. Yeah. That's all I look at. I, I, love I can't it. think of anything else. I there's, just... a, there's a place in Paris. I, it's, I've, I've never been, but it's I've got I'm on their Instagram and they, they make the nicest cakes I've ever seen in, in my life. I really <laughs> want to go. I just want to go to Paris just to try that. Have one cake. of my mates, Cuba, sent me a picture of this gaff in London. What, what the cookies? But they're like that thick. 
and he snapped him in half and it's just all chockering. Oh, lad, I wanted to go when I was in London. <laughs> I wanted to go, lad, but just never found the time. Yeah. Know what I mean? The, the first thing that I thought about that is like, fucking, if a Jaffa case got 60 calories, I imagine, I, I, what's imagine in how that. many That's how what I mean, You're talking like thousands. Yeah. It, and the, yeah, it's fucking, it's ridiculous. It really is. But it, it kind of, it, it does like all lead back into kind of that kind of mental state that you put you in, put yourself in in a fight camp and I think being young males anyway especially I don't know I find some of the personalities in, in fighting the quite dominant personalities they don't like seeming weak if that's the best yeah. that's the best way to, to put it and you know kind of looking at looking at statistics like coming into you know about depression about anxiety you know if you're we were saying before like if you're under 35 and you're male in the UK you're the the most likely chance to go, yeah. way to go, is it's, it's suicide. suicide. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's thing, quite terrifying. It's a thing swept under the rug and it's like, Completely, yeah. hush, hush, people don't talk, like talking about it, you yeah. know what I mean? So, but, uh, and you kind of think we've got, you know, we we have got a lot of, so, you know, when you're in that fight, can't you with other people in the fight and yeah. there can be support, but still, you, you do isolate yourself and you, do, you don't want to tell people your fears because you don't want to seem weak. And I think... I think what you're doing now is is brilliant for what you you know you you said it without even realizing before you said you spoke to a, a list of people and I think that's the way forward in terms of anyone anyone who's fighting anyone who's going through a bit of a sad time talk to people and you know whether it's whether it's your friends your family that no one's I, I, well people yeah people will judge but. You will find people that won't judge and the real ones. Yeah, the real the ones. People who actually judge. care about yeah. People who won't care, judge. People who people who you know are probably possibly being there themselves. I, I know I've been, I've been through some bad times in my life. I where I've been, you know, really down, really isolated and the way you kinda get through it is by talking. Yeah. And that's the you and know that's the stigma stigma we need to get away from. Like yeah. the amount of messages that I got after that cage warriors in like little Thing what got made the little fifteen minute thing before I was meant to fight, and then the first episode of this, yeah, the amount of messages I got of people saying, "Oh, I made up you said that," I've, like yeah, I'm glad it made me feel boss. Yeah, you know no, I mean? and it's amazing, and that's and just just this can help someone like it, like you know on a serious note. If you are feeling down, if you are feeling isolated, go to the doctors and, and you know talk to the doctor. There's not a wrong people, you know. There's a massive stigma around antidepressants the the, the really yeah. is everyone a lot you know going from not in my professional workplace but going from people that i know personally my friends uh, my family they all oh, never touch antidepressants they're addictive they're not addictive that you know it's just if you had a chest infection you know you go on antibiotics, antibiotics hey, you yeah. go on antibiotics for like you know, media the week when yeah, i was yeah, sick a few, I had to a get few on days antibiotics, yeah. a few days a week and it's sorted them but unfortunately i think like the average um stint of depression lasts between six six to eight months so you've got it's a long period of time and accessing um accessing uh, antidepressants are a brilliant way to kind of just help you in in the in to get back into the motion of things and obviously when you've when a lot of people just stop them and that's when people say they're addicted because then you face something called um rebound depression which is what happens when you just stop taking antidepressants um so that's where kind of like oh that oh, they're obviously addictive but they're not it's you've got to be taken off them slowly so your body can start building its own hormones yeah, it's back like, up that's and, like a lot of other stuff isn't it if you just yeah, stop it completely it's, your body's gonna react a crazy way yeah and, yeah yeah like look like me when i stopped eating four thousand calories yeah. or five big Macs a day my body rejected like rejected everything i was like i looked gray in the face i looked unwell i was down and obviously you just slowly build this build it back up but you know, to to anyone that's watching this who kind of you know sees Paddy as a, a massive motivation because you really are doing doing a lot for the kind that's, of thing. So hats as just loads of people have said that to me, but I'm I'm just me. Yeah, I mean? yeah, I'm, you just you just I've, do you. You've known me since I was fifteen, and I've you've never not, changed. Not cha no, I, you, you know what? You have changed. You you become I've more matured, mature in terms yeah. in terms of your career. You've you've matured because you kind of seen this lad who. But you for for a while you you walk through everyone you, yeah. you know what I mean and but I think the learning curves along the way is are going to help you are going to propel you into what you want to be yeah I I know what you mean there I have I've matured a lot and I've become a better person but I'm just still the same fun loving character as I always have been people think people have a different perception of me and like 
stuff like this will help people get to know me more. Yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah. thing. Know what I mean? I'd rather people get to, to you. Yeah, I'd rather people yeah, get to know yeah. me more, especially doing doing it with a platform like this and with my platform that I have got with the followers I have got. I want people to be able to come to me or come because of what I've said. Go and talk to other people. Yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I think the way you talk about your own know, mental health as well, because I think people will look up to you and kind of be like, like you know, it's Paddy the Baddy. You know, he doesn't have any weakness, you know what I mean? Type yeah. thing. He's just, he's a fight, he's a cage fighter, and that kind of stigma around cage fighting and how you've got to be this hard man. We're, truth be told, you know, everyone's well, some got of the a, most fragile, uh, yeah, people yeah. On the planet, and, you know, know I mean? so, sometimes you, you, you're sitting there really upset with yourself because yeah. you, and it's, 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 it's madness sometimes. It's just like it's, we were talking yeah. before about celebrities, people yeah. think that, oh, they've got all this money, they've got all that, what have they got to be sad about? All celebrities, like they're not all happy, as no. we know, from the yeah, suicides. Yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah, been... You look at the like we were talking before, the young ones like Amy Winehouse and Heath Ledger. They had the world at the feet. Mm-hmm. At yeah, the feet though, and, and it's and it's it's sad. It really is. It's 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 heartbreaking. And I think like Amy Winehouse. I don't know much about the Amy Winehouse story, but I think she was a an alcoholic, a, a, a drug user. Yeah, was, yeah. So and I think that's you know I think that's kind of. It's it's you know it's sad thinking that she she had you know you look at her and you think she's got everything. Yeah. Keith Ledger as well. You you think that these people have got and everything. His, they got. His was prescription. Pills, yeah, though, wasn't yeah. It? yeah. These really good looking people. They've got all the money in the world that they want. They people love and adore them all. Yeah, around people. The world. People literally come from all over the world to to see them perform. You know, there's nothing else that they'd rather do than you know come and see them. But. Truth be told, that's the really yeah behind closed doors, the lonely people, yeah, and it's people the, don't it's understand the, that. Once that door closes behind you, it's everything outside doesn't matter. Yeah, you know yeah I mean? it's, it's, just, it's everything in your own head. It's a battle in your own head. Yeah. Another one that I was I always think of is Robin Williams. He was always making people laugh, putting yeah, smiles on yeah. other people's faces. That's what I mean. He was, then, he was a fantastic guy. And in then, in his own head, he wasn't happy. No. He, he come across like he was happy, and he wasn't. And it just shows that it can happen with anyone. Know what I mean? Anyone can go through that. I know lads who who have ended up like I'll be honest. I wouldn't have the bottle to try and do anything. Know yeah. what I mean, every I don't care what anyone says. Everyone's had thoughts of yeah, of doing yeah, that. I agree. But I know lads who actually have, and it, it it's horrible. Know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, what it's the hard. These go through and the mates go through, and I'm sure Jay was my age, Glenn Chris's age, yeah, just a yeah. little bit older. And you kind of think. In my head, like, you know, kind of with my training and kind of where I've been, you know, my kind of um, th- thoughts about it is it, I think it's heartbreaking to think because obviously, you know, as you just said, everyone everyone has had them thoughts at some point or, you know, everyone, there's a high chance that someone's had them thoughts at some point where you're in a really dark place, but a lot of people wouldn't go through it because you don't really want to die. It's just kind of, but at the same time, You've got to imagine where, what place is that person in uh, to to actually go through with it? Where where exactly. they where they think there's there's no other option than, than to do this. Than to do this. What's on the other side of death is is better. You know is is better. And you know I'm not not you know not religious in any way. I'm not kind of going to go into the religion kind of thing. Yeah, but, no, no. Um, but there is no there's no proof of what's after death. So no, I'm kind isn't. of the way I see it is you've got kind of one. You know you've got one life. One and life. There's always help out there. Whether it's somebody, I'm pretty sure if someone can send you a message, you'd have no problem. Talk, you know, talking yeah, to well, them. Do never, you know what I mean? I've so I'd always message them back. No oh, yeah, always, always. Like exactly. Talk. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm Catholic. I was christened yeah, and I was yeah, baptized yeah, I'm, and stuff. I'm that as well. But I, um, I, 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 one knows what's out there. No, Science yeah, has no. proven a lot of things wrong as we as we go forward. Yeah, and yeah. No one knows what what happens. You know what I mean? But and if you speak scary. to people like. I've seen stories of people where they've died for 10 minutes yeah. and they've come back to life. Yeah, that is interesting. People say to them, what, what, what was it like? And they say, nothing. It's just black. Yeah, it's, 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 mad, it's madness. And, but then you do hear the odd, the odd one of someone like, oh, I've seen, seen your granddad. Yeah. Seen your, and, it, and, it's, and then you do start thinking, oh, wait, there's this. But then it's, I don't know, it's, it's terrifying. I personally yeah. think it's terrifying. And I, I just do. think when someone's in that place where they would rather be dead than alive I, I I feel so kind of sorry for them I wish you I just wish you could help every everyone yeah, but same. and I think that's that's where we've got to go in terms of education like our, our Jake um he's only 13 um 
I had to go. I had to go to school basically. Uh, so he, he's been not well because of, he hasn't been eating when he's been training. So he's like, he's keep, his immune system is quite down. So he's been quite unwell. So the school called me mum in. So I went. I went for a bit of support, and um, the teacher ended up talking about mental health with us and kind of like what because I said, you know what you know what you deal with in here and kind of and he said well we're getting mental health charities to come in and we want to start educating people in in terms of talking and and everything like that and i think that's fantastic i think starting that from an early, from age, an early age it's yeah. okay not to be okay it's okay it will get the stigma out there that's yeah. the good thing i've noticed on the telly and stuff recently um if you've seen the little things like take a minute yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Even footy matches, even um, on Instagram, that calm app that you see. Yeah, I've never like, actually tried it, but a few I know people I said to me, it's but brilliant. A few people yeah. have used it, and like even the other week, the Premier League games, or it might have been the FA Cup. They never started them till four or one, mm. like one minute past four and one minute past three. Yeah, and it was so in the ground. Everyone it said like turn to the person on your left and speak to yeah, you. Yeah, have, have a chat with them. There's yeah. not on, and and in a, and uh, you know this society now the way the way we are going our heads constantly on our phones like, yeah. and I think even even your phone can support you there's, there's apps on there there's people you can talk to on, on social media but then at the same time your phone can be a hindrance it could be one of the worst the things worst in the world. because you just look at Instagram and it's just like girls you know what I mean my me, me girlfriend's bad for it oh look at her, this that you know what I mean I'm like what, yeah, you're yeah. perfect the way you are what are you on about yeah there's, there's, you know what I mean? yeah, there's like kind oh, of oh no like their pictures are edited you know what I mean they make the bum look bigger, they make the they look skinnier, yeah. the chest look bigger, you know what I mean? They make the lips look bigger, the face look different. They, they don't look like that on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, no, not at all. And I, and I feel really sorry for the girls that feel... You know, I know this our conversation today has been mainly based around male kind of mental yeah. health, but I feel really sorry for the girls that feel that they have to do that to make themselves feel good in order to gain in order to gain likes. Yeah. Like, I just see Instagram and Facebook as... I piss around and put, just put yeah, funny, for sure, but yeah, funny yeah. quotes on there whatever but and you kind of think so you some know, people it's their life yeah that's their life and they they, they like live for their lives these influencers and, and stuff and these influencers are bad bellends Re- you know yeah I, mean? I completely agree proper bad bellends and people yeah. look up to them I was going to say like, I've been watching Love Island but I wouldn't I would your say, best answer yeah, yeah, yeah I haven't been watching like, it that's at all that's the thing with that like, <laughs> but they're all they're bellends all as well yeah they're, they're all influencers yeah, and they're, they're all they're not normal people yeah. and people like compare themselves to them you can't because they're, they're not normal people that's the worst thing it's the worst thing you can do yeah. to, to compare, you're, to compare you're your you, life to someone else just be you know what I mean don't try and turn yourself into someone else you see people who get crazy plastic surgery and stuff like that to look like celebrities why you just it's lost your own identity. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? exactly why, why what have you just saying. done that? You're Everyone's an you. individual. You're, mm. you're unique. Why would you do that? I, th- I think maybe you know maybe kind of coming. You know you kind of see people might be like, oh, you know, I need to start acting more more like this because they're getting more attention that way. Yeah. Or, you know things like that. But it's 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 heartbreaking sometimes when you, when you look at some people's some people's social media and you can just see how unhappy they are when they're putting this really happy ha- front yeah. on and put the happy front on and then you see them in yeah. person that they're, they're all down and the glum yeah, and stuff yeah, yeah they, they, they don't even the make bedroom. eye contact with yeah, you and shit like, like that, that. But on Instagram everything's there's that picture isn't there where it's like someone taking a selfie and they're all like that but then like you can see where the picture is, and then in the background, it's it's a load of shite. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. And you're like, oh, what, what? People do do that though. Yeah, yeah, Get a selfie do. there like that, and like, oh, so happy I've got this. <laughs> it's it's, it's madness. It people really think is. material stuff makes you happy. Like you see a lot lately. I've seen a new Balenciaga webs. Yeah. Uh, no, I haven't. Lad, I they look like yeah. a pair of Lonsdales, lad. <laughs> I have seen them. Have actually. you seen them? They look like the old the Lonsdales, head, like, the lad. The ones that you strap on. Yeah. The fucking They look like lad. a 20 quid pair of Lonsdales and they're getting sold for five ton just because it's got Balenciaga on. Some, I, I couldn't justify that. Some dickheads in this city are going buy them. Yeah. Just because <laughs> they've got that on. Know what uh, I mean? Yeah, I agree. And yeah. people, are, people are going buy like nine ton coats and that's just like, oh, look at that. Know what I mean? Oh, Jack. Oh, Jack. Um, he used to train with us, Dylan's mate, he's my cousin. But he bought a, I think he bought a pair of jeans, like 700 quid. It's, like, what the fuck? Do you, like, just go like, to next door, yeah, Gap. River Island's Gap the way for Gap, yeah, jeans, you know yeah. what I mean? And like, fucking, they're like, what, 40 quid? It's fucking terrible. Like, no one's going to go, oh, just look at the back of that so I can see that badge there, lad. But people think, yeah, that might, like, Chris Walsh says it the best. You've got to 
a six ton pair of webs on, a five ton pair of jeans and a nine ton coat, yeah. but you live in your mum's box Chris room and you don't even pay her rent. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Chris Walsh is hilarious. I, I love, some, if I'm down, I go onto his, his Instagram Insta. and just laugh. It's he is some hilarious. Of, some of the shit that he puts up there. Is like, <laughs> He's another person that I can't wait to get on here. Yeah, yeah, will be fun, just yeah. Hilarious. Be no, it'd be, really. Yeah, it'd be good. If you had like a group, a group of them and all, it'd be fun. One, one day, I'm going to have to get a group of like four or five people on yeah. and just like, just, just have literally laugh. have a laugh. You yeah. know what I mean? It'd be fucking... That, yeah, that would be boss. But fucking... It's, it's, it's madness when you think about social media, like how good it is, and then on the other hand... Yeah, how, how good it is at some parts, because yeah. like, I'll be honest with me, it's it's helped my career. Yeah, no, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's helped else. my career, and I need social media to yeah. for sponsors, you know what I mean? Just like when I've got on here, Rebel Strength, they got on me through my social mm. media and spoke to me through that. That's how, well, us fighters, like, yeah. we get by. I haven't got a day job, you know what I mean? Yeah, I haven't got a full-time job. I don't know what that's like. I've just had it's, to, it's I've cool. fought... And through that, I've had to get sponsors and then get paid to fight. You know what I mean? But MMA fighters don't get good wages. No, people think they yeah. do because of Conor McGregor. He gets, he gets this, he gets that. He's almost no, we don't. You know what the, I mean? You know, the unique ones do. They do get quite good. Like pay, yeah, I'll be honest for Cage Warriors. Like I fight for Cage Warriors and. I get I get paid a good pay, you know yeah. what I mean. And but the thing is, though, you put asses on seats, yeah. so you, you so you deserve that money at the end of the day. But then, might have it, it's hurt me in the past when you know some of my teammates have got terrible wages yeah, off, that's what, off yeah, it some is, other so. shows and the same show that I'm on. You know what I mean? And yeah. like that's the thing with MMA that needs addressing, but that can make people down. Not getting yeah. you thinking, oh, I'm doing this for that amount of money. It's not, you know what I mean. But then at the same time, I think as well because. Ellis is a prime example of that. Yeah. Ellis is, he's a brilliant coach, but he's also a brilliant fighter. And yeah. Because of what the wages are like in UK MMA, he's, he's, he's retired and he's just coaching full time and he's making more money than he off would doing private each week than he would doing a fight because obviously leading up to a fight, as you know, you're drained. You it don't want to be doing that many privates yeah, each day, you yeah. cut them down. And he's doing that to then fight for five tonne. Where so he's lost out on two quid over those six weeks. <coughs> yeah, know what I mean. So like, what's the what's the point of even? What's the point exactly? Know what I mean? Getting... You've got to you've got to be able to provide to your family and pay for stuff. Know yeah. what I mean? So how are you meant to do that? Ellis is, you know what though, he'll he'll do really well as a coach because he's he really helped me in that. Like yeah, I, I, like everyone there from from Rimmer to to everyone in the camp, but uh, Ellis every time we sparred, I, I feel I feel like Ellis could have just beat me up if he wanted to, yeah. but at the same time, he just brings his level to your level and kind of works Because he's there. an amazing he's coach, lad. Fantastic, and he's he really only 28, lad. He's That's another, what I mean. It's... He's got another 30, 40 years of it, lad. Yeah. He's, he's going he's gonna to be one of the, one coach what's remembered in years to come in MMA. I know for a fact he is, because I've seen some of the stuff he's done with me, Adam, Molly, Fishy, you know what I mean? He, yeah. He's... Even the amateurs, lad. He, like yeah. With Paul having that much time with the pros now, Ellis focuses on the amateurs more, and the level... That them amateurs are that. It's yeah, just it's, silly. It's, it's how he, I, I think Ellis is really good at making like the, the transition between the free sport, you know, like kind of like the grappling, yeah. the wrestling, the stand up. He molds it all into it, one for yeah, you. Yeah, because I, I, like a lot of the times I like I remember because he's got like a certain way of sparring and the way he's like doing that with his hand in front of your hand. Yeah, and I kind of I worked a lot of my sparring in with this game and it kind of it really does help the transition all go together like and towards the end of the camp I, I felt like an MMA natural, fight yeah yeah, yeah I felt like I was natural. where for years you'd only done jujitsu didn't you yeah yeah and yeah and it's just like that comfort with your coach makes you feel boss you know what I mean yeah like, yeah I've spoke to Ellis about it I've said to him I don't want you to fight again I want you to fight again because I know how good he is he's been robbed in some decisions and some stuff hasn't went his yeah. way you know what I mean yeah, but he, he now he's just like nah, I'm, I'm. He, he is one of he is one of them fights. His record does not represent no, him. I, exactly. I do not. I, I do not look at uh, you know. And a lot of people, you are guilty of looking at the record and going. Uh, no, I'm yeah, not that good. Yeah, but yeah. Ellis is really one of those guys. Who, like, we're, like I've spoke about this with other people. Our gym doesn't pad records. No, we fight, challenging fights. We don't just fight bums. We every fight we have so that we can get wins on our record and get a new UFC. When you're like nah, no. no but every person you've fought, like three and ten and seven and eight, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, yeah, you fight yeah. fight people who are going to give us a, a hard fight. A very hard fight. Yeah. Like, like, and, and I think that's I think that's one of the reasons why Next Gen's, you know, it's getting bigger and bigger. Like, you look at, like, Molly, yourself, all the, all the kind of really, the really guys who've got really good characters about them, 
you're all flying, and it's going. To, it's, I'm really looking forward to your next fight. Like, I we, can't we'll wait, all, lad. Yeah, and even I always so go back to the amateur team, all the young ones, all like 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they work their asses off. Really, like Ben, ben, now, ben Kelly. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's gonna be a specimen, lad. Honestly, and he's getting bigger and bigger. Pff, see every, how big his head is. I know. Every, like, every time, head's I, like this big. <laughs> every if time you put an MMA, him. he'd knock everyone out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Every time you spar him, he gets better. Well, he gets bigger as well. He yeah. kind of like I remember in my camp, it was like I felt like we were the same height, and I kind of and then I tried to do the same thing like last time I sparred him. I was like, you, you grew, like you know what I mean. <laughs> it's like old space because he's only like, eighteen, isn't he? I know, he? and you forget that though you sometimes do. with the young ones because the and then it's even better for the young because now the amount of younger kids we've got yeah. competing and stuff. Know what I mean? That's that's gonna hold them in great stead going through. It makes them bully proof. It makes them, yeah. And that's another thing. We'll if you can't bully them, how, how bad it is in your head. Know yeah, what I mean? it's hard. We're we'll looking like I, I really hope. I know RJ will be watching this tonight, but I really hope he doesn't mind me saying. But Jake, I, I'm really proud of him from where he's come because was it last year? It was just before my fight. He got five lads filmed him and beat them up. And if if I didn't watch it because it it, it you just have, yeah well, I would I, I, exactly I would have reacted I would I would have reacted and I, it broke me a bit um, and the school wasn't really interested in helping me mum and dad they were just like we can't have teachers everywhere but then you think you know this lads oh. fucking filming a uh, you know a, a, know. a th- twelve year so old that, that at the time that just shows you what type of people some people are though five cowards I always say it if yeah if two yeah. persons fighting one it doesn't count. That's why it doesn't. It, it doesn't. doesn't it doesn't count. It's not it the same. But then RJ, from where he's come from back then to where he is now, you know, he won the Euro. He won the Euros and then he won the the Worlds. He's he's doing brilliant, and it's all because of next gen. It's yeah. not. You know, it's not. And I've had little input in it, but it's like kind of being around you, being around. You know, inventing the uh, the cowboy jaw. Yeah. They, they all they all end up fighting at the end at the end of the class, and just little things like that. It, it's really give him that support and he's really like tinned now, to... at first he, he only used to come over with you, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Now, now he's just bouncing on his own. On his own you know what I mean? yeah. just, I'm talking boys, all right, yeah, giving yeah. us stick. He reminds me of me when I was a kid. But yeah. Giving yeah. everyone stick and people like fucking hitting me, grabbing me in the corner and that, you know yeah, what I mean? That's yeah. what we do with him now. He gives us stick. What, you little bastard? <laughs> Pull over and grab him. And... That's what I mean. And he, uh, you know, and he did shave his head simply just to get cauliflower here as well. <laughs> that, so. that was so funny. Coming through the day, I was like... Is that you? Is that you? Lad, I couldn't do that now. I couldn't shave my head now. I'm going to have to soon, aren't I? It's, it's, it's one of them. It's get, Chris Walsh. Yeah. Just shave yeah. it off. It's getting, you know, Chris Walsh always says it looks like a pile of spaghetti on a plate <laughs> spread out. <laughs> but it's just, it's getting to that point now, isn't it? But at the same time, like Mansell, he's just had a... Hey, it's on his plans. And it looks, it looks so hard. You mad cat, Mansell. <laughs> you mad, mad man. And he's rolling already. Only got done a few weeks ago. Yeah, I, I hope him. it. I hope it works for you, lad. Because your, your ma's not going to be looking paying that much dough again. <laughs> but yeah, it's one of them. I'm just like, you know what? I might as well just accept it eventually. And yeah. When it gets to, yeah. it's like, you know what? I know we're going back to mental health again. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. But even stuff like that going bald for men that. That affects them. This is me. Right? Everyone, everyone describes me. Oh yeah, the, the big lad with the hair. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is that. That's my identity, and I feel like sometimes I, I don't want to let it sometimes it's just like fuck it just shave it off but then yeah. other times like no I don't want to let it go yet but then you know when you look at yourself in, in the mirror and you're like shit your balls yeah, fuck yeah. it <laughs> yeah That's I, it's gonna, I'm not going to lie it's going to kill me if I ever go bald I, I, remember, I remember you saying like you like I couldn't handle it no, like, I couldn't let my head fall off yeah. like, oh, what's going on here this is crazy it's what's a, going on I can't cope yeah. with this it is, it's, it is heartbreaking it is yeah but um it is what it is. You just you got to accept it, isn't it? So it is. fucking, but it's yeah, it, just going back to the gym as well. Fucking dead quick, but uh, like thinking back to when me and you started, like I think Rimmer was only a, a purple belt. Yeah. And then now, like I've Rimmer put something up the other day. It's like in the next few years, it's going to be like seventeen black belts, like in next gen. And I think you'll have one soon enough. Like, yeah, hopefully, hopefully. But I just think it's amazing the fact that we've all the people, so much yeah, all the people coming in, beginnings. All the people coming in now, they've got so many good people to train with. Like where back in the day, it was like, you know, the the higher belts were kind. Of, it was like three or four, you know, top yeah. people in the gym that you could very rarely get a role in. Um, but now you you see what you know. You look at Ian Wales, for example. Like he, in the space of three years, like he was 
Yeah, he, he's, he fucking came on a hell of Andy a Walsh as well. Andy, Andy, Walsh, Andy you know Walsh is ridiculous. Andy like, now, he got his purple belt not long ago, but personally, I think he's closer to a brown belt than he has oh, a purple yeah, belt now. Co- yeah, there's yeah. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of the new, like, usually with any, you know, you know, it's when you're rolling, you're like, I don't really have to worry, but Andy Walsh, he does things like, fuck it, because he's a big guy yeah, as well, he's and he's got, as well. he's got movement. I had him in my guard for like four minutes, it was before the last fight, like, I had him in my guard for like four minutes, thinking, Come on, Andy. Come on, lad. What are we doing here? He's like, I'm just watching this triangle. Where <laughs> a few years ago, we just started to do something. Yeah, the yeah. Minute, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's he's hard work now. Yeah, Andy Walsh, he is. So is Chris Walsh as well. Chris is unbelievable. One of the hardest roles in the gym. So, no, watch us before we finish. Um, UFC's this weekend. Saying that, I want to give a shout out to Grayson with the Joneses. Yeah. Anyone needs any Grayson boards? Liverpool's first Grayson company. Give us a shout. Get on them on Instagram. Yeah. Grazing with the Joneses. Valentine's Day stuff and all that. Box your beard. You're flying. Um, just before we go, I'm going to get this up. So the card, obviously we know Conor versus Cerrone. Mm. I'm gonna, I, I can't go against Conor. I, know, I, I, can't, I can't go against Conor. I think Cerrone could land the egg kick, but I can't go against Conor. bigger Connor. than him, isn't he? Yeah. I didn't realise that. And it's at 170. Would, yeah. I, 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 if that egg kick comes over the top, he yeah. could flatline him. I'm really looking forward to the fight, but you know what? I've always stood by him before, so I'm going to have to say Conor. Yeah, yeah. same. Holly Holm versus Rachel Pennington. I'll be honest, I don't know much about Rachel Pennington. I'm, no. I'm just going to go Holly Holm. Yeah, Holly. You know what I mean? Yeah, she's our girl. Uh, Holly Inek versus Murray Screen. I'm, Holly Inek's the one with the mad submissions, isn't he? With the, yeah, yeah. Just because of them submissions, I'm going in, me. Yeah, I'm well, going in as well. Uh, Ga- Claudia Gardella versus Alexa Grasso again. I've never heard of Grasso. I'll go, I'll go Grasso. Yeah, I've, I've, know, I've, yeah. I've heard her before. I'll yeah. go Gardella because I don't know Grasso. And then. Anthony Pettis versus Ferreira. I watched the countdown of them two the other day, and that Vera seems hungry. I, yeah. I'm, I'm going to edge for him. I just feel like Pettis is. Well, I haven't yeah. watched the countdown personally, so yeah. I'm just going to go Pettis because I know him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, know, I know what he's about. So that's it for episode two. Next week, I am going to have Paul Reed on, who is my new strength and conditioning coach, and he just, he's no jack of all trades, no all sorts about nutrition and getting scientifically ready for fight sports and stuff. So that'll be a good episode, also. Webb, I want to thank you for coming on, fella. Thank you. Thank you, lad, for taking your time out of your day. This was episode two of Chat and Pony with Paddy the Baddy. Everyone that was asking me when the next episode was coming, it's finally here.